what a good day good morning no way that'd be an odd name for a church wouldn't it where do you go no way you got to tell me no way what's the website no way I could just go forever. I was just fine. Jesus is so good. I hope that you're enjoying him this morning. A um, couple of, of quick housekeeping details before we jump into, the, into a brand new teaching series. One, uh, today we are kicking off out in the lobby. Uh, Richard, Richard, will you stand over here so you know who you are? Tallest guy in the building for sure. Um, Richard Bohat is, is our man who's leading our off ramp outreach and he and carrie have put together uh these one gallon bags they have a bible in them a, a list of cooling places different toiletries a pair of socks water electrolytes these we have fit richard 50 of these right now okay 45 of these in the lobby today i'm gonna ask you let's let's have none left when you leave here today and we'll make a bunch more and these are to be given to the to homeless in our area those that are less fortunate in this incredible heat that's going on. And I think this is going to be so successful that we're going to probably do some in the, in the winter months. Uh, they're a little different uh, focus. But um, please, take one of these, put it in your car, and, and find an find a opportunity to bless someone. Um, I had the prototype one of these, and I gave it to a guy just a couple of weeks ago. And you would think I gave him, like, serious cash. He was so excited about, about this, and, and he was excited about the bag. He's like, oh, that's a new bag. I'm like, yeah, we wouldn't have used ones this new. So uh, be sure to grab at least one, put it in your car, get Matt, will you take this from me, and, and, and let's, let's give those away. Off ramp outreach starts today. I'm so excited about it, um, and so be sure that you grab one of those when you go out. Um, secondly, if you would pray with us, we this coming Friday, we're hosting the Break 200 conference, which is a big deal. Um, I'm super excited about it. Um, here's the cool part about the Break 200 conference is it really doesn't do anything for City Church. We're just hosting churches from across the state. Many churches from across the state are going to be here Friday night and Saturday morning. And it's, we're just equipping churches to grow. Get tools, um, di different techniques, and, and we're, we're, we're going to have giveaways. We're going we're gonna to bless every church that we can, that attends. I'm so excited about the Break 200 conference. Mike Santiago will be here. Um, he's going to be preaching next Sunday, by the way. If, if, you, if you have a friend that needs to be introduced to Jesus, bring him next Sunday. Mike holds, no, holds nothing back when it comes to talking about Jesus. Um, but the Break 200 conference, Friday, Saturday, last Sunday in connection, last Sunday, our camera fell, actually the, the tripod gave up it, and the camera fell and it broke and we need to replace the tripod and the camera uh, for the conference but also to be online. We average on, on our Sunday morning, on our, we're on Facebook Live and we average 200 viewers a week just on our Facebook Live and then of course we, all of our, after that it's, we're placed it on YouTube. So it's a vital ministry that we have and um, we were not prepared for that to be in our budget because we're hosting this conference, but we, ne we need to purchase a camera and a tripod uh, by next week. So we're just believing the Lord is going to work a miracle and make that happen. Um, and if you believe that the Lord wants you to help uh, in that miracle, you can uh, help in that miracle. I was afraid you'd ask. See, people ask me how much you need. I wasn't going to say because I just wanted God to, I wanted to have a no way. So I'm going to hold out. I, I want to leave here today going, no way. Um, I'm, I'm so excited. At the, the Break 200 Conference. City Church, let me tell you how cool you are. I, I'm sorry not to get in the word for a minute, but this is how incredible you are. We belong to an organization called Better Together. It's about 200 churches across the valley. Different denominations, different sizes. Churches of 20, churches of 6,000. And we pastors rally together. We meet together monthly. We meet together in small groups. We have covenant with each other. We pray for each other's families. And we really are better together. We help each other. We help grow each other's churches. A couple of weeks ago, we had our, our new youth group attend 
Palm Valley Church in Goodyear, attend their youth program just to get started. We are, David and Abigail, before David, our worship leaders, came through uh, another church's intern program, and now they serve here. This week, City Church, I'm, uh, I, I meet with a lot of pastors. I'm meeting with a pastor. Pastor's a small church of about 20 in North Phoenix. His dad in Philadelphia was diagnosed with an ailing, ailing uh, sickness, and we, City Church, we... we purchased him an airline ticket so that he could go to Philadelphia and see his dad and then um, also put a, a, about $200 of walking around money in his pocket. The bad news is Microsoft went down and he couldn't leave. Apple. Just saying. But, but that's, that's the beauty of, of our role in this valley is just to come alongside other churches. And this weekend, the conference is going to be so, so cool. So, um, good morning. You ready to jump into God's Word? If you have a copy of God's Word with you, I need you to open it to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 is where we're headed. We're embarking on a brand new teaching series. Uh, it's going to be about five weeks. And uh, the, we're, we're, gonna, we're calling it the elephant in the room. And we're going to talk about some topics that don't usually get talked about in church. Um, probably going to be some discomfort in the next few weeks. And not discomfort to intentional to bring guilt or, or to, to tear anyone down. But it's, again, they're not, these are not topics that are normally talked about in the church. Um, in, a, in a couple of weeks... Uh, Patrick Rickley's going to bring the word about elephant in the room, and he's going to just talk about how poor we really are with our finances. Do you know that your checkbook should not rely on who's in the White House? That's, I won't steal any of his thunder. Uh, we're going to talk about mental health and how the church doesn't do well in that arena. Um, we're going to talk about the, uh, the, the, the spirit of discouragement. Since COVID, the, the, the terminology is a famine of hope. And yet, when we walk in the doors of a church, we pretend that we have it. And today, we're going to kick it off. We're just going to go straight at it. So you ready? Are you ready? This series is going to require that we lean on God's word, and that is a good, that's a good place to be. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, did I tell you that? 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Will you stand with me for a moment as we read this one verse? We're going to read one verse out of 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. We stand as we honor God's word. 2 Corinthians 2, 11. That we would not be outwitted by Satan... For we are not ignorant of his designs. One more time, that we would not be outwitted by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his designs. Jesus, today, I pray your word comes alive. I pray that your freedom sets us on a new place. I pray that we can't help but leave here today built up, equipped, and ready to influence people towards your kingdom. Let that be what happens today. And all City Church said... Amen. You may be seated. That's an interesting verse that we may not be outwitted. That word outwitted actually means to be mocked, to, to be made fun of it, to be outsmarted. And, and that we would not put ourselves in a place where that the enemy could mock us. That we would not be mocked by Satan, for we are not ignorant and that word ignorant really takes some, some, a deep dive. We, 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 sometimes we think ignorant means stupid. It does not. Ignorant means lack of knowledge. We're all ignorant about something. But the, but the, 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 the most pure definition of, of, of our opposite of ignorant is to have intimate knowledge. It's intimacy. And, 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 and then his designs are his objectives. So if we read that, that verse a little different, that we would not be mocked by Satan, for we are not to be intimate with his objective. We have a very powerful tool on the planet today in, across our culture. It's a very powerful tool, and, and it has a lot of different names. Um, we, 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 there, it's got, it, it depends on where you are. Like we, we, this tool, we call it the internet, or we call it Wi-Fi, 
or we call it Bluetooth. Or, and we, 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 we know what it is, we don't really name it. Like we'll just, you know, we're, 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 we'll be staring at our phones and say, are you on it? it? Or we talk about whether it's fast or slow. Boy, your, your, your internet is slow. We talk about uploads and download speeds and megabytes, and we have all this terminology, but it's all, it's all kind of like when t- today, un- under your kitchen sinks, you have 47 Walmart bags. I don't know why. We don't need that many, and we keep saving them. And they're not all Walmart, but that's what we call them. Our most generic term for the Wi-Fi is, this is our most generic term, just Google it. Just, well, well, somebody just Google it. What time does Buffalo Wild Wings close? Well, just Google it. In fact, we've become so lazy that we just say to our phone, call Buffalo Wild Wings. Would you look up the freaking number yourself? But like anything that's created, it didn't come from Satan. He can't create. He's not creative. He's strategic, but he can't create. So anything that's on this planet is created, and God is the only creator. The problem is when something gets created and it gets soiled and, and used by the enemy for his, for his design. The, the, there's, the, let me give you a, a, a picture. There are some amazingly gifted musicians on this planet in, in all different genres of music. Very, very gifted, incredible voices, talented on their instruments, creative in their lyrics, divine design, no question. That, those gifts are from God. He put those gifts in them. He created them with those gifts. Unfortunately, those gifts get used for darkness. Okay? Satan takes whatever is created, and he has a counterfeit, and he, and he, and he soils what, what has been created. Okay? The Internet is as well. The internet is an incredible tool. It's a powerful tool. It's a marvelous tool. I, we use the internet. We have a website. We, we encourage you to go to the internet. We, well, just Google it. We do that all the time. The problem is not the internet. The problem is that the parts of the internet that the enemy has used for his own design. And one of those ways is internet pornography. And we're going to talk about pornography today. It's not a common topic in the church, but unfortunately, because it's not a common topic in the church, it's not pastored well. I know that today, you know that when, when, you, when you help me preach, um, I preach shorter. <laughs> I want a shirt that says no way <laughs> Satan's strategy is always deception when, when we are not to be ignorant with his designs it's always for deception always 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 for deception that's why second corinthians tells us don't be mocked don't be outwitted don't be outsmarted don't don't be foolish don't be fooled by satan he only does one he just deceives that's all he does he just deceives and 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 don't get caught up in that so we're gonna we're gonna really have two parts today one i want to talk to you about the, the 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 four a's i'm gonna give you four a's of internet pornography and then we're gonna talk about the freedom that jesus offers This message will not end in defeat of addiction. It will end in the prosperity of freedom. Okay? So the the first A of internet pornography is anonymity. On the internet today, you you can become anyone you want behind the screen. I think we see that in social media where people begin arguing it back and forth and would put, put statements out there that would never, you would never say in public but you'll type it and hit send. And, 
And, and the, the anonymity uh, allows us to go to places where we think no one will ever know that we go. Scripture says this about that thought. In Luke chapter 12, it says this, For there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, neither hid that will not be known. Now listen, this verse is not, this, is a, this book was not written to brutalize you, beat you up, or make you operate from a position of fear and guilt. That's not what that verse is about. That verse is not, oh dang, I'm going to be exposed. That verse is about a God that loves you and doesn't want to bully you and knows because he loves you and knows what's best for you and can help you with the best life possible. He will reveal the dirt that's inside of us so that we can live the best life possible. And so this is really a promise of assurance. This isn't a threat of exposure. There's nothing covered. There, listen, that's good news. There, you have no secrets from him. You can be honest with him. You can be transparent with him. You can be bold with him. That's freeing right there. Nothing, nothing. Why? He loves you. And he loves you in your anonymity. But it's that, that, that anonymity that, that, that can cause us to get, fall, get ourselves into such trouble. Internet pornography is one of the, one of the largest counseling points of, of pastors today. I talk to, and I don't say this boastfully, it's, it's true. I have a ministry called Riptide that coaches pastors. I talk to many, many pastors every week. This is, the, this is the number one topic that comes into their room, in their offices. I'm, I'm walking with a pastor right now and his wife that uh, I, I've been coaching for a few months and it, and it got revealed. Uh, 27 years, he's had a hidden addiction to pornography. And it got revealed because he started going to chat rooms, dark web chat rooms, and the FBI caught on. I'm close with a family who, a married couple, have been married 57 years. And in the last couple of months, it's been revealed that the husband of that couple has never one time been faithful, has been addicted to pornography and exercising it with, with adulterous affairs for 57 years. Why? His answer was, I never got caught. We believe the anonymity of the web of the internet protects us, and that's why God loves us enough to say, no, it doesn't. And I will show you how much I love you by revealing what's in you. You okay? <clears throat> so the number one A of, of internet pornography is the anonymity of it. The second one is the accessibility of internet pornography. The, the internet pornography is available 24-7, 365. It's never not out there. It's, it's never not out there. And many men and women that would never step foot in a pornography shop are going there. 50% of men admit struggling with pornography. 30% of women admit struggling with internet pornography. Those numbers blow my mind. 50% of men 30% of women. Let, I'm going to show you a bunch of statistics today, not to bore you, but to reveal uh, how, how difficult it is to navigate this. Of those 50% and those 30% of men and women, the majority of them are accessing internet pornography while at work. Look at this statistic from the National Catholic Register. I believe it's on here. The industry standard reports that 70% of porn traffic occurs between 9 and 5, and people in the Eastern time zone account for the largest number of porn site hits, 30%. 70% of porn traffic happens between 9 and 5 because of accessibility. 
It's anonymous and it's accessible. And the problem is once you visit it, once you visit the, in, in the way that the, the, the dark web and, the, and pornographic websites work, is they, they all begin to, to tail and, and connect together. And, and, and they, they begin, the algorithms begin to connect other websites to you. I was doing a series years and years ago about the transformation power of Jesus Christ. And so the, I think a little different than most people. So I was trying to think, what's a really cool illustration? It's just going to, how can I really illustrate the transforming power of Jesus? So I have Tracy and I have six children. So I went to my two oldest t- boys and they were, they were young adults at the time. And I said, hey, hey I'm, I, I want to show a picture of a really, really ugly person and someone that's really handsome. Where can I find a picture of a really ugly person? Now, most people don't ask their kids that, but I was interested. And they referred me to a website. They said, hey, here's a website, go here. So I went to this website. And sure enough, you go to this website and there are some ugly people. And then there's a little box on the bottom that says, for really ugly people, click here. Oh. The illustration just got better. So I clicked here, and I'm in the office of the church that we're pastoring. I'm on the office computer, and I clicked here for really ugly people. And windows just started opening, all pornographic windows. Open, 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 open. And I I can't click fast enough to turn them off. So I unplug the computer. I just unplug it. And then I plug it in and get it turned on, and I'm thinking, no way. My boys would never send me. No way. I did, no way. I, no way. So I went to that website a second time, and the ugly people, and the window for really ugly people, click here. And I did. And it starts opening all these pornographic windows. Click, 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 click. I have to shut the computer off. And then I'm like in panic mode. Because like, how many people are going to use this computer? And they're going to see the search history of this computer. And what if those things keep opening after I turn it back on? Like, I have to burn down the church. That's the only answer. Just burn the church, get the insurance money, and start over. That algorithm, Scripture, scripture warns us about that. Listen to this verse, Mark 4. We, we, we actually teach this out of context. Pay attention to what you hear. Now get that first line. This is, this, it's important that we get this in context. Pay attention to what you hear. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you. And still more will be added. Pay attention to what you watch on the internet because what you watch, more will be added. That's how the algorithm works. Amen. Pay attention to what you hear. You guys, everyone in here has experienced this. You know this. You're sitting at home, talking to the wife. Honey, I think I need new tires for the truck. Turn on the computer. What comes up? An ad for tires for the truck. And then you look at the tires for the truck ad, and for the next nine years, you get ads for tires for trucks. And that's just not in the natural, that's in the spirit. And because we fall prey to the anonymity and the accessibility, we can't figure out why the temptation keeps coming. It's because the spiritual algorithms tell us, be careful to what you watch, be careful to what you hear, because more will be added. I love you enough to warn you. So there's anonymity, there's accessibility. The fourth A is affordability. Let let me me say this. Internet pornography is not free. It's costing somebody. That is somebody's little girl. That is somebody's son. That is somebody's grandchild. Most probably being trafficked in an industry that's out of control. We we think that, that it's free. No, 
first peak might be free, but there's a cost behind internet pornography. The affordability is a design the enemy wants us to believe his design that it doesn't hurt and doesn't cost anyone anything. The anonymity, the accessibility, and the affordability all part of his ploy, and we're not to be mocked by him. The last A, anonymity, accessibility, affordability, which leads to addiction. Let me just give you some statistics, not to bore you, but to open your eyes and bring you what's, what's happening with the world of addiction. Number one, listen to this. 25 million Americans visit cyber sex sites between one and 10 hours a week. 25 million. Uh, I, I won't read the references on all these, but the, all of these I can give you the references to. The U.S. Customs Service estimates that there are more than 100,000 websites offering child pornography, which is illegal worldwide. 90% of kids 8 to 16 years have viewed porn online, mostly accidental, while doing homework. 30% of all unsolicited emails contain pornographic information. 51% of pastors admit that looking at internet pornography is their biggest temptation. According to a U.S. News and World Report article, the porn industry recently took in more than $8 billion in one year. That is more than all revenues generated by rock and country music, more than America spent on Broadway productions, theater, ballet, jazz, and classical music combined. Eight billion in one year. I did a little math. By today's average house price, eight billion dollars a year, you could buy 266,000 houses. You, you, could, you could travel around the globe 321,000 times to make eight billion miles. If you saved 10% every day starting now, you would have to save, or if you save $10,000 a day starting now, you would have to save $10,000 a day through the year 2192. And that's how much money is made in one year. Pornographers disguise their sites with common brand names and misspellings designed to entrap people. The primary examples is they will twist ESPN, Disney, and the White House. One study found that a child exploring the internet may be trapped in an adult site by a new marketing technique that disables the options such as back, exit, or close navigation buttons. According to net value, children spend 65% more time on pornography sites than they do on game sites. Over one quarter, 27.5% of children aged 17 and under visited an adult website, which represents 3 million unique underage visitors. Of these minors, 21% were 14 or younger, and 40% were female. Finally, 62% of parents of teenagers are unaware that their children have accessed objectionable websites. And for the most part, the church is not really good about talking about pornography. And for the most part, the church doesn't set up an opportunity for people to be transparent and say, I struggle with pornography. We're, we're quite open-armed for other addictions, aren't we? But when it comes to a pornographic addiction, we seem to put a stigma on that person. You're not helping me, so I'm going to keep going. The good news is, our Savior has a strategy of deliverance. That's a reason to celebrate. Our Savior has a strategy for deliverance. Hey. Our Savior has a strategy for deliverance. Why on earth would the statistics of pornography cause us to go, wow, but the truth that our Savior wants to deliver us doesn't? Our Savior 
has a strategy for deliverance. That is good news. Here, here's the deal. A person can really can struggle with pornography and still love Jesus. We were created for pleasure. We were created to have pleasure. There's a reason the tree in the garden is called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It looks good. God himself wouldn't have named it that if it, if it wasn't true. You okay? I hope so. Look at 1 John 4, 4. Little children, you are from God and you have overcome them. What? The, the world. For he who is in you, he who is in you, he who is in you is greater than anyone that's in this world. He is greater than anything that's in this world. He is greater than anything that's in this world. He is greater than anything that's in this world. He is greater. He's like, no way. Greater. And listen to me. If you think you don't need this message today, you must be godlier than David, wiser than Solomon, and stronger than Samson. Way. And don't fall prey into the gender there, because I could have added, you, if, if, on the female end, you, you could be Sarah, who gave her husband a concubine. You could be Gomer, who went back to prostitution, not once, not twice, but three times. You could be the woman at the well that had six different men. You could be the woman caught in adultery. Listen to me, no one, no one in this room is above the temptation of being mocked by, the Satan, by Satan himself. But you're an overcomer. Because greater is he who's in you than he who's in this world. That's the message. So here we go. Here's some of God's redemptive strategy. Number one, listen, consider what you're doing. Think about what you're doing. The number one, the number one reason people view pornography is they're looking for intimacy. That's the number one reason. And, and uh, for some reason, I thought about this this week, so I did a search. You know what the opposite of addiction is? Do, do, have you ever thought about What's the opposite of addiction? What was that? I thought it would be too. The opposite of addiction is connection. That's, what, that's what's being sought after. And pornography, pornography promises intimacy, and then it robs from you twice. Pornography robs you of intimacy with God, who's the only one who can love you intimately. Pornography gets you so focused on your own selfish desires that you're unable to love and know anyone else in a true intimate relationship. Think about this. Think about this. A piece of plastic with some glass on the front is becoming an object of intimacy. <clears throat> and it robs individuals of their confidence in Christ because of guilt and condemnation. I, I know many fathers they won't pray for their children because they feel like such hypocrites what they do in secret. Stop and consider what you're doing. Not just consider what you're doing, but number two, listen, consecrate your mind. Consecrate your mind. Romans 12, 2, listen to what it says. Do not be conformed to this world. Now let me help you out with that word world. That its most popular use is in John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that word world defined is any system designed to exist without the presence of god that's world any system designed to exist without the presence of god do not be conformed to the system designed to exist without god but be transformed by the renewal of your mind 
Here's what has to happen in a renewal. Before something can be renewed, its current existent state has to be destroyed. You don't renew the flooring in your house without removing the old flooring. He says, don't be conformed to a system that's designed to exist without God. The way that you're going to do that is to get rid of everything that you possibly use to go to places you shouldn't go. By testing, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, what is acceptable, and what is perfect. 2 Corinthians 10.3 For though we walk in the flesh, listen to the words used in this, for walk in the flesh, we are not waging war, waging war, listen to the terms in this scripture, waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of warfare... This is what we're talking about today. The weapons of warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. Come on! Divine power to destroy strongholds. I love verse 5. We, now we're included, we, we destroy arguments. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take thought and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Proverbs 23, 7. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. I want you to look at this next slide very carefully and you may want to take a picture of it because it's a great reminder. You are not what you think you are but what you think you are. You are not what you think you are, but what you think you are. By the renewing of our mind. Psalm 119.37, turn my eyes away from worthless, worthless things. Preserve my life preserve my life according to your word what does his word say you are an overcomer greater is he who's in you than he who's in the world what does his word say he died for you to forgive you restore you renew you refresh you revive you what does the word say he will never turn from you reject you leave you not a shadow of who he is what does the word say his eyes are on you and you are more valuable than the sparrow that he provides for every day what does the word say there is no limit to the supply that he has to bring redemption to every part of your life what does the word say there's no coastline that can measure the length of his love what does the word say? The, the world will end, but his word will last. What does the word say? One day we will see him face to face, be made complete, and the battles will be over. What does the word say? The word says that I will destroy strongholds by renewing my mind. Number three, and I mean this, commit yourself to Bible memory. That's a lost art. Let me tell you why it's a lost art. I, I, I love, I love the YouVersion Bible app. I'm grateful for Life Church, who produced it, Craig Groeschel. The YouVersion Bible app has been downloaded over 2 billion times. It's a, an amazing tool. Odd story about the YouVersion Bible app. So last school year here at Ottawa, I was teaching a workshop and the workshop was called How to Navigate Life with a Biblical Perspective. And at the end of the workshop, I had a young lady, a college student, come up to me and say, I, I've never read the Bible. Where would I start? And I said, well, I would encourage you to start in the book of John. Just read, just read the book of John. And she said to me, where do I get a Bible? And I said, do you have the Bible app? And she said, there's an app? which to me reignited the flame that City Church has to influence this campus. Yeah. 
But we, the, where we've lost art is the YouVersion Bible app will send us, if, if you're at all subscribed to it, every day you get a verse. It drops a verse. You know what we do? We read it, clear it. We've stopped memorizing this thing. And that's a tragedy. There's so much in here. Tra Tracy will tell you, I read this. I, I, have read, I have read this Bible. I have read every word of the Bible. There's roughly 33,000 verses in every Bible. Roughly 33,000 verses. I have read my Bible front to back, top to bottom, 27 times. And I still get something fresh out of it every morning. Amen. Every morning. Commit yourself to Bible memory. Look what Philippians 4, 8 says. Finally, now when Paul, the greatest, the greatest influence of the New Testament, when Paul says, finally, that means sit up and pay attention. You didn't get anything else. Get this. Finally. And by the way, he's writing this while he's in prison and not just in a Roman prison. He's in the dungeon of the prison. The dungeon root word of dungeon dung he's in the dung room of the prison because the last time they had him in prison he got away he's in the dung room of the prison writing this letter to the philippian church and he says listen if you don't get anything else finally brothers whatever is true whatever is honorable whatever is just whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is commendable if there is any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. You know, I love, to, I love to read this verse just a little bit different. I think Paul was saying this. Finally, brothers, Jesus is true. Jesus is honorable. Jesus is just. Jesus is pure. Jesus is lovely. Jesus is commendable. Jesus is excellent. Jesus is worthy of praise. Think about Jesus. Yeah. Psalms 119.11, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Start memorizing scripture. Jesus defeated Satan by reciting scripture. And the problem is, some of you don't have anything in your hard drive. And when the temptation comes, you have no weapon fashioned to defeat what's coming at you. You might be saying, dang, where do I start? Here's where you start. John eleven thirty five. 35, Jesus wept. You just memorized scripture. You can mark the box. Today I memorized John eleven thirty five. Jesus wept. Woohoo! Start memorizing scripture. Get it in your bank. Get it in your bank. Pastor, and I, I hear this so frequently. Pastor, when I when I read, when I read this and try to memorize it, I I just don't remember it. Oh. Yeah, that means forget it. Yeah, forget it. Or, if I ask you, what did you have for lunch last Tuesday? You would say, I have no idea. But you gained from the nutrients. Commit yourself to Bible and memory. Number four, counteract Satan's strategy for your life. Do the opposite. We are such predictable creatures. He doesn't have to work very hard to find our weaknesses, to find our habits, to find what group of people we go to when we're feeling down, to find what, what time of the day we go to where we shouldn't go. He, does, he doesn't have to. He, he figures out our tendencies, and then he just plays to our weakness. Start, start doing life differently. Satan gets us in a destructive routine, and then he moves on. Listen, and, and here's, I'm going to get a little bit brutal right now. You okay if I do that? If you knew 
that internet pornography would ruin your marriage, why do you just get a filter? Get rid of the freaking internet. If you knew that addiction to an illicit drugs would destroy your life, you would stop using it, going to places where you would get it, and hanging out with people that do it. But we don't do the same with this addiction. We justify it, or we still have compromised reasons that we go where we shouldn't be going. Well, I, we have to have that. No, you don't. I don't know if you know it or not, but this globe existed almost 6,000 years without the internet, and it did pretty good. And that was anointed spit, by the way. Good thing we're not having a baptism. Romans 6, 14, for sin should not be your master. You're not under the law, you're under grace. If you can't handle a smartphone, get rid of it. Get rid of it. If you, if you can't help flipping on the TV where you... Get rid of it. Yeah, no one's saying amen to that. Like, like, get rid of it, get rid of it. Yes. If there's people in your life that come over and talk about their escapades on the internet, get rid of them. Be pastor, how am I going to win them to the Lord? Well, you need to get one to the Lord. Just cut it off. Just cut it off. Wow. Number five, confess your sins to a loving God. We're almost done. 1 John 1, 9. It starts out with a word called if, which means it's a choice. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and he's just and he will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness come on purify you from all unrighteousness David if you'll come up I actually was prepared to stop right here with all the C's. I just gave you C's. Commit. But I need to land on one more, and then we're going to have some prayer ministry. Psalm 139, 23 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way that's everlasting. What's the point? Make a covenant with someone. Get someone in your life that you can be transparent with and you make a covenant with. Now listen to me. I said covenant. I didn't say promise. I didn't say commitment. I didn't say contract. I said covenant. Because a covenant is different than a promise. It's different than a contract. It's different than a commitment. A covenant, a contract is written. In case you don't keep your end of the deal, I don't have to keep mine. A contract is written that if you don't keep your end of the deal, that I can impose penalties. A contract is written that if you step out of line, I can bring in an attorney to get you back in line. That's contract, that's promise. A covenant says if you don't hand up, hold up your end of the deal, I don't have to hold up mine.
That's why Jesus uses the word the old covenant and the new covenant. Because the word covenant means no matter how you behave, I'm going to do my part. No matter how many times you lie to me, I'm going to show up and call you out. No matter how many times you have to contact me at three in the morning, I'm going to answer the door and we're going to go get coffee. A covenant says, I want to help you be free so that you can live the best life possible. And no matter how you behave, I'm keeping my end of the deal. And we all need someone that we are in covenant. I know that, <clears throat> Matt, we can get this for me. I, I know that I've, I've hit on some, some deep-rooted emotions. Some of you in this room have this addiction. I don't say that to beat you up, to bully you, to downcast you. I say that because I believe today's the day of freedom. Some of you in this room don't have the addiction, but you're a victim of someone that did. Some of you in this room have someone you love that can't seem to get victory over this. I, this is a really broad influence, this internet pornography some, some of you some of you in this room feel like you actually have a call to help people get set free I know that that's true So for all of those areas, our prayer team is going to come up. Wherever you are, please come up. And our prayer team is going to be available to you. And, 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 and here's what I, I, I want to make something very clear. During the next song and after the next song, Matt will, will come up and dismiss us. But during the next song, we talked about this is warfare. And if there's someone in your life that needs you to do more for them today, you need to come up and have someone agree with you and pray over them. If you are a victim of someone that's been caught up into this addiction and there's some emotional scars or some relational scars or some fear, you need to get prayer today. If you're in this room and you're carrying an addiction in this area, you need to get prayer today. Now let me say this to City Church Broad. I said it earlier, and I won't tolerate it at City Church. It's pretty rare that I pull the lead pastor card, but, but today I'm going to. I will not tolerate putting a stigma on people that have this addiction. We will love them and serve them and believe in them and fast for them and pray for them and encourage them and build them up and be in their lives, and we will see victory in their lives. We will not stigmatize an addiction that, that many, many people battle with. We will do battle. So whoever responds today, do not sit in your chair and go, oh, I'll bet they. No, you don't. You don't have a clue. This moment is a holy moment. I didn't wake up yesterday and say, tomorrow we're talking about God. This has been an ongoing message in my heart for months for this moment. That you would be healed, that you would be free, that you would realize who you are in Christ, that you would be equipped, that you would influence people towards his kingdom, that you would have authority, 
to both lead other people away and to have freedom in your own life. That this moment that happens in the next couple of minutes is a supernatural moment. And I believe people are going to leave this moment saying, no way. Will you stand with me, please? We're not dismissed. This is a holy moment. The band is going to play one song. Matt will dismiss us between here and there. I know there's people in this room that need prayer and need agreement with these amazing people up here. Don't wait. Don't lose the momentary battle. Get victory so you can walk out of here equipped. In Jesus' name. I just want to speak.